morning. We are Eau Claire Baptist Church. We're glad that you're here today with us to worship. Our choir will be presenting our Christmas cantata also. Let's all stand now as we sing, Angels We Have Heard on High. morning this is the day the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it so a week from today we will be celebrating christmas and it is a good day today to gather together in the lord's house i am so excited for what our choir will present to us today and uh, we thank our choir joe fred all of the choir for the hard work they've done in preparing for today. And so please be praying for them as they present the cantata this morning. It is so good that we can gather together in this way. And so before we move forward in the service today, why don't we take 30 seconds and you can give a socially distanced greeting to those around you, but take 30 seconds and greet one another this morning. Good morning to you. Welcome, feel free to be seated, and I want to invite, uh, wondering today, because we are lighting the Advent candle today, the fourth candle, and wondering today if any of our children might want to help light the candle today, and if you do, come on down, I, I'll take all the help I can get, so Cammy, you come, and if there's anybody else that wants to help us as well. All right. Hey, good morning. So is everybody excited that uh, school is out now, right? Or almost, is everybody out of school? 
Almost, right? I know District 1 has two more days. I wonder who made that calendar, right, to give two more days. You have two more days, right? How many more do you have? Two. Two, okay. All right, Cammie is a lucky one. Finished on Friday, all right? So today we have a special privilege to light the Advent uh, candle together. And I just want to let you know before we light the fourth candle today. So we've been focused over the past couple of weeks. We've talked about uh, hope. We've talked about peace. We've talked about joy. And today we light the fourth candle to represent God's love for us. And I want to go ahead and tell you, does anybody know what next Sunday is, by the way? Christmas. It's Christmas Day, right? And so there's been a lot of questions, right? Do we have church on Christmas Day? Do we stay home? What do we do? And so I want to let you and the congregation know that we will have service next Sunday at 10 a.m. And so if that means that you're going to come in your pajamas, you know what? I invite you to come in your pajamas, all right? Adults, if that means that you're going to come in your bedroom slippers, I invite you to come in your bedroom slippers, all right? However you decide to come, I hope you will because does anybody want to know how many years it will be until we get to have Christmas, until we get to have a Sunday service on Christmas Day? Does anybody want to know the next time we get to do that? Any guesses? How many years do you think it'll be? Six years? I don't, I forgot. You forgot? Any other guesses? Six. Six? Adults, any guesses how many years until we get to do this again? So it will be, just to help you know, right, if you decide not to come next Sunday, your pastor's not going to judge you, all right? But I want you to know that it will be the year 2033 until you get to worship in church on Christmas Day, right? On a Sunday, all right? So, that being said, come in your pajamas, come in your bathrobe, come in your bedroom slippers, all right? But we will, next Sunday, we will get to light the Christ candle, okay? So today, we're going to light this fourth candle, and I'm going to let you guys grab uh, the bottom of this, and we're going to light this fourth candle today representing God's love for us, all right? So thank you for your help. And listen, after the hymn, any of the children five and younger can dismiss with Miss Rhonda. But for now, I'll let you have a seat back. And then after the hymn, you'll be able to be dismissed for five and under. Okay, thanks for your help today. All right, and welcome again to any of our guests. We are so glad you're here today. Uh, we want to take a moment now to read the scripture together and to have a prayer together. Before we read the scripture this morning, I just want to share with you a couple of congregational needs to be mindful of. So first of all, we do express our sympathy to the family of Miss Virginia Mathis, who passed away uh, Wednesday of this week. And so we are praying for her family. Her service was yesterday. And I just want to pause and give a word of thanks to all who ministered to her family through the service, through the meal, through words of comfort, and through prayers for their family. So Miss Virginia was 99. We loved her so much here. She was so resilient. And uh, we know today uh, that heaven is now her home. So please continue praying for her family. Also, before we read scripture and pray together, it is so good to see uh, many of you back today, perhaps for the first time in a long time. I'm so glad you've gathered together with us to worship. Our scripture reading is Galatians 4, verse 4. It's one of my favorite passages of scripture, especially this time of year, because it speaks of God's timing. And you know what? God knew exactly what he was doing when he sent his son. God had already arranged the timing, when it would come to pass, how it would come to pass, every tiny detail God had already arranged. And the Bible speaks to that in Galatians 4 verse 4 when Paul writes this, But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. 
And as we pray today, I pray that you allow God's timing to come in your life. And we pray as the choir presents the cantata in just a few minutes that we will open our hearts to draw near to the Lord Jesus and to let him be Lord and ruler of our lives. After my prayer today, uh, the ushers are actually going to come. We're going to receive an offering together. After the offering and meditation time, I invite our children five and younger to be dismissed, and then the choir will present to us the cantata. I invite our ushers to come and invite you to bow and pray with me today. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful for the season. And Lord, we pause now to pray for those, perhaps, Lord, who are hurting and grieving. Lord, those who have faced a very difficult year through perhaps loss or other circumstances, Lord. Today, Lord, we remember that there really is no perfect Christmas. In fact, Lord, when your son was born, it really wasn't perfect circumstances, Lord. There really wasn't a perfect situation. Lord, for what we think about how Mary and Joseph endured, how you brought your son into the world. Lord, for the persecution that was brought for years to come. Lord, today we are reminded that, our, that our, in our own situations and circumstances that are less than ideal or less than perfect, Lord, today we are grateful in the midst of that that a Savior has still come. And so, Lord, as we now prepare our hearts for this time of offering and as the choir prepares to sing for us, Lord, we pray where hope is needed, we ask you to bring hope. Lord, where peace is needed, we ask you to bring peace. Where comfort is needed, Lord, we ask for your comfort. Today, we rejoice that a Savior has been born and Lord, we pray your blessings now over this time of offering. We ask your blessings over the choir. And we ask these things in Jesus' name and all of God's people said together. Amen.
this child that we celebrate each December, the one we gather to adore at this special time of year. Hundreds of years before he was born, the prophets predicted and proclaimed his arrival. To those men, listening to the voice of God, he was the promise, a distant hope of a savior, deliverer, redeemer. One prophet, Isaiah, even said that the child would be the sign of Emmanuel, which means God with us, and that he would be called other names, such as the Prince of Peace, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, and that he would be known as the Wonderful Counselor. the time was right and God would send the promise first he needed a woman to bear his child he chose Mary of Nazareth a girl who was engaged to a young carpenter named Joseph but while Mary was still a virgin an angel of the Lord appeared to her saying you will conceive and give birth to a son and you will call his name Jesus he will be great and will be called the son of the Most High and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Mary asked the angel, but how can this be, since I have never known a man? And the angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. My soul magnifies the Lord, my soul magnifies Why? 
This child was a true gift from heaven. Her firstborn, conceived in a miraculous way, would be born in an unusual place. In the town of Bethlehem, 70 miles from home, Mary gave birth in a barred stable using a manger for his cradle. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flock at night. And lo, the angel of the, world, of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. To angels who proclaimed it and to shepherds who received it, this child, God in flesh, was the ultimate good news.
The shepherds weren't the only ones to receive the good news, and the angels were not the only ones delivering it. A star, an enormous star, appeared over Bethlehem, proclaiming the Savior's birth. That star could be seen from hundreds of miles away. In fact, somewhere in the far east, some magi, men of wisdom and known for their interest in the skies, saw the star and set out on a long journey to find out why it was there. The Bible tells us the star led them until it came and stopped above the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed beyond measure. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and falling to their knees, they worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. to those who anticipated his arrival. He was the gift to the girl who gave birth to him. He was the good news to those who proclaimed his birth and who saw him as a newborn lying in a manger. And to the Magi, this child was the king of kings. All who foresaw him or beheld him in the flesh were sure that this truly was a sign of Emmanuel. God himself with us. And from that moment on, the world would never be the same.
we are now over 2,000 years past this blessed event. And sometimes we still ask, what child is this? What does God with us mean today? Historically, the child's birth would mean only that he was special, maybe even divine. But that's only if the story stops at the manger. Yes, the Bible says this baby boy was indeed God in the flesh. But we have to move on from that event in Bethlehem to understand he can, how he can be God with us now. The child grew into a man knowing that he was sent from the Heavenly Father and knowing that someday his father would ask of him the ultimate sacrifice. A living sacrifice was needed to cover man's sin from the holy eyes of God. And when he sent Jesus to earth, it was the Father's way of placing our sin upon his own Son so that we might have eternal, abundant life. The story doesn't even end there. It continues to the glorious resurrection of Jesus on the third day and then on to his return in heaven to sit at God's right hand. And if that were not enough, God sent his spirit to live within us to be our guide, our comforter, our friend, and our advocate. And that's why we can say right now that he is here. For many of us brought him here today within this place. And his voice is speaking, maybe softly, to the hearts of some who still have the question, who is this Jesus? How can I become one of his? Listen, all of us should listen and know that his spirit, his presence is here.
Who can give the choir a hand today? That's right. I, I can handle it a second time. Could you? Amen. Thank you so much, choir. What a, what a fresh move of God's spirit. He, he is here. Amen. God's spirit is with us. And that's what his word said, that he would be called Emmanuel, God, with us. And so thank you, choir, for presenting that to us today. I want to share with you just a very brief message. And following the message, we'll have a moment of invitation today. And I'd like to go ahead and extend that invitation to you in just a couple of minutes uh, when we sing together. If you have a decision to make for the Lord, I would ask you not to put that off. I would ask you not to say, I'm going to wait until next Sunday or maybe next year I'll get it right spiritually. I would ask you not to wait. Because as the scripture has spoken to us, as we read earlier in Galatians 4, verse 4, that at just the right time, God sent forth his son. And the time then at the coming of the Messiah was the right time, just as God had appointed it to be. And that is important, but for today, maybe for you, the time, the right time, is now. And the scripture speaks to that as well, if I could read for you just two additional verses of scripture to help illustrate the importance of the right time in your life being right now. And the scripture says in Romans chapter 5 verse 6, for while we were still helpless, and uh, that word helpless can also have the connotation of hopeless or taking it in context with the book of Romans uh, that that emphasis could be while we were still in our sins while we were still separated from God while we were still allowing sin in our lives to come between us and God Paul says for while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. And so God's timing was right in Galatians 4.4 4, when the Savior had come. God's timing of sending forth a Savior, not just to the world, but in your life and in my life. The, the right time is now. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, really brings this point home. And you know what? Today, uh, the choir has given you such, such an immeasurable gift of the message of God's salvation through Jesus Christ. And, you know, next Sunday morning, I, I don't know what your routine might be. Um, you know, I don't know who's going to make it here, who's not going to make it here, but... I wonder sometimes if we will do with God's gift of a son what we sometimes do with those Christmas gifts. You know, you, you open one and you, and, and you try to show that expression that you like it and you're saying, you know, oh, I got that last year. And in your heart you're saying, oh, I'm just going to put that on the shelf. Or, you know what, as soon as the store, store's open, I'm going to be in the return line to take this one back. If you've been there, say amen. I wonder sometimes if we do with God's gift of his son what we do with gifts we receive that, oh, I would have rather had something else or, you know what, I'll put that on the shelf until next year. Some of us have been putting God on the shelf this year. Some of us have been saying, you know what, next year it'll be better. God, I promise you. 
Some of us have been putting God on the shelf until next Sunday. And I want to say to you today, before we leave this place, the timing of God's gift for you is right now. For whatever reason, God has seen fit to bring you into this place, to bring us together. And I leave you with this, and I would ask you to receive God's gift of his son, Jesus, wholeheartedly. Don't put it on the shelf until next year. Don't say, I'll wait until a later time, because the reality is none of us are promised tomorrow. The reality is, is that we see on the news weekly those who have passed away that are, uh, for example, age 40 in the news this week. Uh, Someone passed away that was in the news at age 40. You read the news as I do of a tragic accident. Oh, we never thought they would go so soon. We read the news of a stage four cancer diagnosis. Wow, I never thought it would move so fast. And folks, the reality is, is that eternity is hanging in the balance. And some of us are doing with God's gift what we do with those undesirable Christmas gifts. And we're just setting it on the shelf until next year or until a later time. And Paul says in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 1, We urge you not to receive the grace of God in vain. At the acceptable time, I listened to you, and on the day of salvation, I helped you. And then he says something that I don't want you to miss today before you go home or before you join us for fellowship Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next year. The scripture says now. And I invite you today to do your business with God. If you've been putting him on the shelf in your life or treating him like an unwelcomed gift or treating him like an unappreciated gift, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. And I would invite you over these next few minutes together as we sing, I would invite you to receive the gift of God's Son now. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, I pray, I I beg you. If it takes me to beg, I'll beg. Don't miss Jesus. Amen? Don't miss Jesus. Now is the day of salvation. And he doesn't promise you tomorrow. As we sing together this closing hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain, I'll be up front to greet you. I would love to pray with you. I would love to lead you in receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior if you've never made that decision. I would love to see some of us in this membership take him off the shelf and make 2023 such a more phenomenal year in what we do for the Lord. And I invite you to start that today. Would you stand with us as we sing? I'll be up front to greet you. The altar's open. You come as we sing together. Go tell it on the mountain. Stand with us.
do wish you a Merry Christmas. I'm so glad you were able to be with us and worship today. So thankful for the choir, Joe, Fred, all the choir. Thank you so much for all of your hard work. Uh, truly a blessing today. And after the benediction, I invite you to join us downstairs. We have fellowship, uh, coffee, light refreshments, followed by Sunday school. I hope you'll stay and join us downstairs for our benediction today. Let me pray for you this morning. Would you bow with me? Father, we are grateful that today is the day of salvation. Lord, we are grateful for Jesus. We are grateful today for hope and forgiveness and peace and eternal life. Father, during what can be a dark time for so many, I pray today that we would allow Jesus Christ to illuminate our lives, illuminate despair, illuminate in depression, Lord, illuminate in discouragement. I pray that the light of the Lord Jesus Christ would shine brightly and fill our lives and all we come in contact with, with hope, joy, peace. We pray these things in Jesus' name and all of God's people said together, amen. God bless you. Thanks for being here today.